Hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, today um, we are going to do something brand new and see how it goes. I am putting the fate of the world in your hands. So what that means is this is the chopping block here, okay? Um, I am going to tell you about some books that I started reading and am not thrilled about. And because I have a a need to always finish the books I'm reading, um, as much as I think sometimes I shouldn't finish them, because if I'm not liking them, I'm just going to have a awful feeling about them the whole time kind of thing because I'm like, oh god, god, god. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put the um, burden on you and you guys will decide if um, these books are things that should be finished. Um, so, the first book here is David Markson's Epitaph for a Tramp. Um, I have started this twice now and um, read a couple chapters and then I put it down because I just couldn't handle the... Uh, the main character is very... Um, not quirky. What's the word I'm looking? Oh, I had the word and now I can't think of it. Um, he like he cracks ridiculous jokes, and the book seems it's not like a Carter Brown book where like the whole thing's kind of goofy to an extent. It seems very um, like the book seems more serious than this guy. And it's probably just because he started cracking jokes right off the bat. Like, and he's like, ah, oh, seems like we got a Laurel and Hardy two reel here. It's like, it's a little much. So, um, if you have read this book and the book gets better and, um, this is the first David Markson book I've read. So if, <clears throat> like, does it get better, guys? Is this a book I should be reading? Um, if you think that this book is worth it, let me know down below, and um, I'll give it another go. Um, or if you were like, yeah, just stop then that would be very easy. So, that's the first book. Epitaph for a Tramp, David Markson. The next one <clears throat> is one that I'm actually kind of surprised with. Um, it is The Long Ride by um, James McKimmy. Now, this book isn't bad by any means. It's actually... Um, really well written and um, it seems to be going into um, something that's going to get really heavy but the thing I don't like about it is that every chapter is told from someone else's point of view um, about the same kind of thing. Like, all these characters are converging. You have, um, like, the book starts off <clears throat> with these guys in a hotel room with some other dude tied up and mouth duct taped, and they're, like, putting cigarettes out on them. And, um, nobody's likable, obviously, in this chapter. And you don't really know what they're doing, but it turns out they're trying to get information about this bank that they're going to rob. And um, so then the next chapter is um, about this 
newlywed couple that are young and um, there's something about the husband that's a little mysterious other than the fact that he only has one arm. Um, it's like, why does he only have one arm? And he's talking about some um, job he could have pulled in Mexico, but you don't know what he's referring to exactly. And um, he's looking out his window, and then the next chapter, and the wife is like, hey, we could go anywhere you want, you know, there's this lady who's driving out to California, we could, um, she put an ad in the paper looking for people to ride along with her, um, we could go to California if you want, and he's like, eh, whatever. Um, then the next chapter is about the bank robbery, and... Um, they're robbing the bank. The guy with one arm is looking out the window and the bank is right next door to their apartment building. And then, um, one of the guys gets shot and dumps the bag of money in the alley. And he runs out down to the alley, grabs the bag and runs back in just as the other bank robbers running by and the cops are chasing him, shooting at him. So he takes the money up to the room. And so this is like sounding amazing. The next chapter is the lady who's going to be driving across the country and she's interviewing people. And, um, you think that the guy that is being interviewed is one of the bank robbers trying to get out of town and it turns out that the bank robber is already a part of the group and so is the one-armed man and his wife they don't know that the other ones are in the car trip yet but it turns out the guy who's trying to get in there um is an fbi agent who heard that the other um robber is going on the trip and um so then the next chapter is him at the hotel room talking to his other fbi buddies and it's just it's 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 not confusing it's confusing a little bit but it's like so much is happening and it's being told from so many different people's perspectives that like I read a chapter and then put it down and then go do other stuff. And then I end up picking up another book and reading another book, like the whole book before I go back to read the next chapter of this. And it's just like, I don't know if it's like the mood I'm in right now, but I'm really digging just like reading like a single perspective guy who isn't cracking wise every two seconds, just somebody who finds himself in a situation and how they're going to get out of it. This book just seems huge and it's not even that big of a book, but it seems so big when I'm reading it and it's just like a drag almost. And like, trying to remember who all these characters are. And again, because I'm putting it down and picking it up and putting it down and picking it up, I'm sure it's harder. So, um, long story short, if the long ride is worth the read, let me know down below. Um, it's funny cause pr there's probably like 10 people right now who are like, that book sounds awesome. I'm going to go pick it up. And I'm sitting here saying, I don't know if I want to finish it. So that's that. Um, then finally a book that you cannot save it's already been on the chopping block. The axe already came down. Its head fell into a wicker basket. Um, and now its body's running around and blood spurting out the top of the neck hole. Um, it's awful. Um, but this book, um, I DNF'd. It is Ori Hits Nudist Camp. Um, this book is kind of ridiculous and it's one of those books that it came out in a time when they were trying to make smutty books for the masses but didn't want the books to be smutty but wanted it's almost like they're like let's make people think they're reading a smutty book um so i read uh like 60 percent of the book um, or thereabouts, maybe even a little bit more, but it's about this chick from Iceland. We've talked about it before. And, um, 
her and her husband are having troubles. Uh, her, her husband's going to leave her. She ends up meeting this guy who is really only in town because he's trying to find the perfect location for a nudist camp. Um, which is just silly. And he's lying about why he's there to try to get into the social circle of this neighborhood that he thinks would be a perfect place. And um, he convinces the woman from Iceland, who will now have no money because her husband has left her, that she should convert her property into a nudist camp. And it's funny because of just how ridiculous the premise is. And then for her to be like, this is the best idea I could think of. Like, yes, we're going to do this. And um, <clears throat> so, and then it turns out that um, her, like, maid that is pregnant, because if you remember, I said, talked about that. The pregnant maid actually got pregnant by the girl's husband who left. Um and instead of, like, it being, like, this thing, like, I can't believe you slept with my husband, you little slut, da 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 da, da. it's, oh, you know what? We're gonna take him for every cent he's got. Um, I need you to sign this paper saying that he's the father, and um, it's totally cool. You can still work here. I trust you 100%. Like, the whole thing is just, like, ridiculous. But that wasn't the reason why I stopped reading it. The reason why I stopped reading it is because all these people were showing up for the nudist camp and paying their bills, and there's a photographer there to take pictures to sell to the nudist people. Um, and as they're talking about it, they start talking about how there's a lot of families there and there's a lot of children at the nudist camp. And that is really gross. And it's not even like, I mean, it is like, it's disgusting that that happens, but it's even grosser when I feel like parents are like saying this lifestyle's okay. This is how we're going to raise you and you have to be okay with this. Like I've known people, um, who actually grew up in nudist families and, um, they're, it fucked them up really bad. And I'm not saying it fucks everybody up, but the people I know who grew up in that, um, did not adjust well. Um, and there, and there are people I know who, um, are, who are a part of that lifestyle and think it's totally okay. And I've had to cut ties with them because I don't think it's okay. And it's just, um, like if you're going to do stuff as an adult, go do stuff as you, as an adult, but don't like force your kids into, a lifestyle that's weird. Like you could say whatever you want to say about it, um, and make up whatever excuses you want, but it's not okay. And this doesn't just like, I don't know how serious I want to get right now, but like, uh -huh. I even think, like, in religion, like, to me, like, spirituality, let's say, is a personal thing. And however you do that is how you do that. And um, especially with the American guilt-based religious culture. And if you're super religious, that's totally cool. Um, but for me, like, I didn't want to raise my kid in any certain religion. Like, I felt like that was, 
a choice that my kid would make when my kid was old enough to make that choice. Um, I, I believe in raising your kids right and doing what you can to make sure they're safe and um, well adjusted. But something that is important and serious as religion and spirituality, I really believe that is a journey that um, everyone needs to take on their own and isn't something that um, you should force upon someone else. <clears throat> and so politics, religion, nudist camps, all of these things um, fall under the same thing. Um, hopefully that was not offensive to anyone. I tried to make sure it wasn't. But anyway, um, so... With that being said, there is nothing that the book Nudist Camp by Ori Hitt can do to make me think that I need to finish reading this book now. So, that book is DNF'd. Um, but, I know that or he hit was not like that. And I'm sure he read like, seriously, like I bet this is how it happened. He was like reading like time magazine or life sitting on the couch, smoking his pipe. Um, his family's doing family stuff. And he comes along this, um, exclusive, um, life inside a nudist camp. And he, cause like, there's a lot of like information about nudist camps, like in this book, like ridiculous statistics and stuff. Um, so like, I know he, he probably just read one article and was like, huh, this would be a bachala and, um, wrote his nudist camp book. And he probably, for the people who are into nudist camps, he probably put the stuff in the book that would seem, to make it seem like he at least knew the lifestyle. As you would researching anything. So I don't um, begrudge him for it. And there wasn't anything with the kids. It just said there were kids running around and I didn't want to read any more of it. Because that's where... Um, this guy starts drawing lines and stuff. So that was it. So anyway, um, there you go. Ori hits nudist camp is done. Um, David Markson's epitaph for a tramp is on the block waiting for a call from the governor. And so is the long ride by James McKimmy. So let me know down below what I should do.